from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. And welcome back here on the Sands as we're at the AWS reInvent day one of our coverage here. We're here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday live here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage from the show floor. Hall D again, if in the area, come on by and say hi to Justin Warren and myself. Along with Justin, I'm John Walls. We're joined by Andy Langsam, who's the COO of N2WS. Andy, good to see you today. Good to see you too. Thanks for being here. And Danny Allen, who's the Vice President of Product Strategy at Veeam Software. Danny, good afternoon to you. Thank you very much. Now we can talk about a lot of things. Uh, Canadian citizenship, fractional ownership, <laughs> a lot of great conversation. But let's talk about data. Right. Um, and, and, and of course, the paramount need these days, right? Everybody's got to know, I'm all right, I'm secure. I've got this big warm blanket around me. What are the two of you doing to give people uh, with those kinds of concerns the ability to sleep at night peacefully, knowing their data's safe? Well, you know, N2W was founded on the, the premise of not to worry. That was the founder's vision. Right. And if you could convince somebody that was doing the backup and disaster recovery not to worry, that was a great way to get started. Uh, but we're excited today. We've announced uh, N2WS version 2.4, and it's focused on taking your EC2 snapshots and putting them into S3 storage to lower your costs uh, by up to 40 and 50%. And so that's one of the things that we're talking about today. All right. So, and Danny? Danny? Yeah, and so if you expand on that, so this is data protection for the cloud, and one of the things historically we've focused on as well is data protection in the data center. So this brings the two together and gives you data protection holistically across wherever your environment happens to be, and, and goes beyond that, not just data protection, but how can I take the data and do more with it? And so we're excited, and it seems to be resonating with customers. We have, what, 189% year-over-year growth on the cloud side, it's just huge, it's a booming business. I would because, assume, yeah, you don't have any problem getting people's attention these days, I would say. No, assume. we don't. You know, it, at the booth, it's it's just amazing. Uh, you know, eight, 9,000 sign-up badge scans and people all wanting demos and wanting trials of the software. You know, anytime you can talk about cost reduction from five cents a, you know, a gig on uh, EC2 storage to two cents on S3, uh, it's a tremendous savings for our customer base and so they're very excited. Um, we did a survey uh, recently, and over 50% of our customers spend over 10,000 a month on storage costs in AWS. So if you think about that, and if they can save 40% on that, that's real, real savings, more than the cost of the software alone. Sure. Yeah. Yes. One thing about cloud that has often sort of went past people because they were used to the data center and they were used to how they protected their data in the data center. And cloud kind of changed the way that you had to do that and you have to think about it in a slightly different way. So clearly um, NGWS is, is part of the solution to that. But when you have people who have a bit of data in both of those systems, how do you help them understand which, which techniques they should use for data which is in the cloud compared to data that's in their data center? Or am I able to just use the same techniques and just go, you know what? I'll take care of you and we'll just turn it on and it'll magically work for you. It's not the same techniques, but it's the same platform. And the reason I say that is in the cloud, if you're in AWS, for example, you don't have access to the hypervisor, so you can't do a snapshot of the hypervisor. You have to right. call an API and say, give me a copy of the data. Exactly. If you're in your own data center, you say, take a snapshot at the storage level or at the hypervisor level. So there's different techniques, but at the end of the day, it's still data protection. And with a single platform, that's what's so exciting about this release, Backup and Recovery 2.4, is you have a single platform that you can manage data protection both on and off premises, right. so that you can leverage where is the best place, location for this workload, and I can protect it across no matter where it chooses to live. Yeah, that is something that we've been hearing all day today here at theCUBE, is that people are talking about putting their data wherever they want it to live. It could be in the cloud, it yes. could be on their own data site, could be out at the edge. So what do you see as the, the vision, like where are customers going with this where, where do we want to put data? We, we heard for a long time that we should migrate all of our applications into the cloud. Clearly there are a lot of organizations who are doing that. There are some who have put some things into the cloud and they're actually taking them back out again. Sure. Where are you seeing customers moving their data around? Well, the answer to that, of course, is it depends. There's no single mm. answer for everything. Right. Uh, what I say is the cloud is excellent for certain things like variable-based workloads or you need a massive amount of comp compute for a certain amount of time. What, what people have tried to do sometimes is just lift and shift, take what's on premises and move it to the cloud. And sometimes what ends up happening is they put it back on premises because they realize, hey, the cloud's not a charity. They're actually putting in <laughs> margin there for that <laughs> <Really>? workload. <laughs> Very good. So 
there's use cases for all of this. What I think actually what gets exciting is that as people design for the cloud, use Lambda and serverless type functionality, that will become a lot more sticky. And so our focus is wherever the customer chooses to run the workload, we're not going to dictate it one way or the other. In fact, one of the great things that we enable is this portability. If you choose to be in point A today, you can move it to point B and back again. So we give that portability that ultimately allows the customer to solve what their business need is. Right. You, you mentioned the customer growth. I think it was like 189%, you were saying. Is that net new customers to Veeam completely? Is that Veeam customers who are growing into using this new product and putting their data in the cloud? Where, where is that so, growth so, coming so from? So that growth, that growth has been since we've been acquired by Veeam back in December. Yeah. It's almost been a year now. We, yeah. were, we were acquired by Veeam and we've been allowed, we've been, being acquired has allowed us to focus on uh, the customer and innovation versus going out and raising money from investors <laughs> as a small company, right? And so we've had 189% growth in our uh, business in terms of revenue since we've been acquired. And uh, it's really accelerating both on the growth side in all sizes of customers. We've got customers recently like Notre Dame and Cardinal Health. And then we have people getting into the cloud we, you know, for the very first time, and they go to the Amazon Marketplace, they search through the catalog, they find uh, the N2W product, they download it, and uh, well, they provision it, and onward they go. Yeah, right. let's, you, you mentioned Cardinal Health. Yep. Um, let's talk about the sector in general. I mean, very unique concerns, obviously, uh, when it comes to whether it's protecting imaging or patient information or whatever it might be. Um, what are, have you seen in terms of addressing the needs of that sector because obviously um, uh, this is a, an area that's growing. Uh, there's more capability than yep. ever, and yet our concerns in it are growing with that. So I mean, what do you guys see in that space? Yeah, so I think you know, in the healthcare sector in general, I think what, what they're really concerned about is the compliance requirements. It's not just backing up the data, but it's the requirement that you have a backup and can restore, and you can recover from a disaster or from internal hacking, or from whatever, an outage, whatever it may be, and if they don't do it, the repercussions are very, very high. And I think that the whole world with um, GDPRS and things like that are all coming together to dramatically raise the requirement to be more secure than ever, and your you know, backup and disaster recovery strategy is paramount to them. They won't be talking about we're going to do this. Some customers say we're going to do this ourselves. So we'll, we'll write our own code. You won't see that in the healthcare space or the financial yeah. space. I, and so I see kind of three interesting areas. One is they typically will have very specific applications like Epic and Meditech that they need you to protect that are aware of that type of application. So that's one part of it. The second is there's a lot of certifications required to deliver healthcare services. So you have HIPAA and high tech and uh, you know, BAA certifications and all these things, and that certainly comes into play when you're talking about the cloud. So you need to have that conversation. Then lastly, ransomware comes up a lot because there's been a lot of mm -hmm. ransomware attacks and malware attacks specifically directed at the healthcare industry. So those yeah. are the three kind of areas that we have probably the most conversations about. Right, yeah, uh, malware has been the best advertisement for backup and recovery <laughs> ever. Yes. It's, it's kind of fabulous in a way, in a scary way, we don't actually want to encourage this kind of behavior, but for, for those of us who've lived and breathed backup for a while, it's like, finally, people can take this seriously. So that's something that people have, have realized that, okay, I need to have this. What are they looking at next? What, where, are they, where are customers looking to Veeam and, and to NTWS? What are they looking for you to add next? So I'd say the next kind of big step, so today we've been very much reactive as an industry, right? Help me protect my data, let me get it back, let me recover to the cloud or move from one cloud to another cloud. Now we're getting customers saying, you have all this data, you understand the context of everything that I own, help me get smarter in my business so that I can drive the business to make decisions more quickly. So mm -hmm. give developers a copy of the data so that they can iterate on it more quickly. Give a copy of the data to my GDPR experts because they need to analyze the data and do something with it. And so we're moving away from just being reactive to business need to being proactive and driving the business forward. And I think where it gets really interesting, as we go down the road, and now this is buzzwords I admit, but around machine, machine learning and artificial intelligence, we're actually, we leverage a lot of the algorithms that are existing in clouds like AWS yeah. to help analyze the data and make decisions that they don't even know that they need to make. Yeah. And that decision could be, hey, you re need to run this analysis at two in the morning because the instances are cheaper. That type of predictive analysis helps the cu uh, customer reduce costs, but also drive the business forward. 
Yeah, so how do you move into that kind of advisory space from a, a more traditional, it's like, we'll protect your data. It's like, how do, do customers come to you and say, actually, you have our data anyway, why don't you do this for us? Or are you going to customers proactively and saying, hey, we, we can do this for you. We, we have access to this data and we can tell you that we can provide these insights to you. Would you like some more of this? Which way does that conversation tend to go? It's a bit of a mix. What I'd say is that the data protection space or the storage, you know, the traditional IT person becomes kind of the help desk. And then because they've enabled self-service, recovery, file level recovery, mm -hmm. item level recovery, these other areas of the business come in and say, hey, can I use that self-service to do X and Y? So it's a new buyer, it's a new constituent, right. but they're actually looking to IT to enable them to do more stuff with the data. Okay, so it's basically I want to interact with you in a similar way that I'm already doing it, and you've proven your worth in this area. Like, maybe you could do it over here as well. Exactly. Sounds like a great opportunity for growth. And not just on legacy, I mean, one of the interesting things with the N2W software is we enabled for example, data protection on DynamoDB. So people think of databases and they think SQL Server and Oracle, but we can do this even in cloud RDS type workloads with DynamoDB to help them drive cloud hosted workloads faster for the business as well. Mm. Well, you mentioned Notre Dame. Uh, can we have any connections on the playoff ticket situation? Can we <laughs> I, wish. <laughs> I wish. Just wanted to make sure. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. And um, let's get back in maybe three or four weeks. We'll talk about that, okay? It'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be it'll be interesting to see who the final four are going to be. That's for sure. <laughs> thank you both. Thank we you very much. Time the information. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks. Back with more here from AWS Free Invent. We are live in Las Vegas, Nevada.